you know, I'm not gonna say I'm nostalgic for the days when every even marginally popular toy or video game got an obligatory cartoon because TV is weird. But it is kind of weird that that seems to happen less now, right? I mean, I know the Saturday morning cartoon concept isn't really a thing anymore, what with streaming, but shouldn't there be at least like a Minecraft show or something? Hell, I remember when there was a Monster Rancher cartoon at one point. Did that many people even ever play Monster Rancher? Anyway, video game cartoons in particular tend to have a kinda iffy reputation. Most of the big ones from the Golden Age were cheaply produced and often didn't properly represent or even have much to do with the games, especially given that the US companies translating mostly Japanese imports in the 8 and 16-bit era were often not provided with much information as to what the games were supposed to be about. Sure, there are standouts, there seems to be a rough majority consensus that Sonic Satam was the best Sonic cartoon overall, and I'm a huge apologist for the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, but for my money, the gaming series of that era that deserves the most reappraisal is Captain N, The Game Master. Captain N, the Game Master. Yes, Captain N was cheap and cheesy, its lore and storyline were wildly inconsistent, it's a nakedly commercial experience and watching it as either an adult or a kid who's grown up in a slightly more sophisticated era of children's TV animation today can be jarring to say the least. But that's equally true of Transformers, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, Sailor Moon, the US dubbed version anyway, and even Pokemon. And the internet is drowning in think pieces about how there's merit and something more to be found in all of those, so why no retro love for my boy Kevin Keane? I think part of it is because, despite the premise, the series didn't really do fan service in quite the way fans at the time were expecting. Nintendo basically handed Deke a short story from Nintendo Power called Captain Nintendo, which I guess the guy apparently who thought it up never even got paid for? That's not cool. That was intended to create a company-branded mascot just in case Mario didn't stay consistently popular for the next several decades, and Deke proceeded to throw out everything but Mother Brain being the main villain, and instead constructed a more conventional teenager becomes a hero on another world show, populated by whatever licensed game characters struck their particular fan within the time frame they had to think these things up. For example, Samus Aran isn't in there because Nintendo never bothered to tell the studio that the main character from Metroid had a name. I'm sorry I didn't take you seriously before. I couldn't believe that this was real! So instead, you got a weird assortment of mostly NES era second stringers on the Goody and Batty teams, most of them hugely redesigned and with broad cartoon stock character personalities. That seems to be another reason gamers don't look back on the show fondly. They got all kinds of details wrong. And I get that. As a kid, I remember wishing Mega Man looked more like himself and being annoyed that they made Simon Belmont into a total douchebag. There's only one person who can cheer up the princess, and I'm looking at him. I shall give the orders. Mega Man, shine my boots. Kid Icarus, I could use a little trim. Not too much off the top, however. Simon, let go of me. But looking back from today, it makes total sense why they did it, and I'm inclined to be way more forgiving. The fact is, especially since there was no internet in 1989, you had to do a real deep dive if you wanted to know anything about what most video game heroes' personalities were actually supposed to be. And even then, it wasn't always especially rich in that era. A proper rendering of each character in this show would have saddled Kevin Keane with a team of the noble hero, the noble robot hero, and the noble hero with wings. That's not a lot of fun dynamics to play around with. Meanwhile, among the villains, Dr. Wily, Eggplant Wizard, and King Hippo all seemed pretty much on point. And even if they didn't, Motown legend Levi Stubbs makes up for it with his inspired casting as Mother Brain. Then I'll be the beautiful queen of Video Land! <laughs> And as much as it feels like a missed opportunity that they seem to barely scratch the surface of all the different game worlds they could have visited even back then, in an era when there was no Twitter to spoil the plot of every TV episode before you watched it, it was a real trip to turn on Captain N and be surprised by an episode randomly taking place around stuff like Faxanadu or The Adventures of Bayou Billy or California games. Hell, in Season 2, the weird, snarky, smug asshole versions of Link and Zelda from the Super Mario Bros. Super Show started showing up. Mm -hmm. You two heroes can pat yourselves on the back some other time. We have important business. Oh yeah, right, Ganon! Ganon? I thought you wiped him out for good! So did I, but we just heard a rumor that someone's trying to bring him back! Wow, you got any clues? That blew my mind back then, in and of itself, and then they did one where Kevin and Link teamed up and went to... an NES game about Puss in Boots. Okay, sure. I still contend that this is the most badass version of Princess Zelda, by the way, apart from when she's deliberately trying to disguise that she is Princess Zelda. But looking back on Captain N today, the thing that weirdly sticks out the most is how ahead of his time the Captain is. Dancing is easy. Here, I'll show you. Ooh, I like this. I've got some pretty cool power moves, too. <laughs> Thank you. 
No, seriously, hear me out. See, I've always been bugged by this idea that the circumstances of who you are is supposed to have some specific sway over what you're into. Like, hip-hop isn't for white guys, punk rock isn't for black guys, boys have to do this, girls have to do that, you can't like sports if you're into smart stuff, or you can't be smart if you're also an athlete, a nerd is this, a jock is that, or if you're gay you're not supposed to be into... I don't even know anymore. Most of my friends are really nice, so I'm not really up on what all the current stereotypes and prejudices are. Point is, back in the 80s and 90s, being big into video games was often viewed as kid stuff in general and nerd stuff if you were any older. And even though I'm proud as hell to be both a gamer and a nerd myself, I don't know, forcing people into boxes isn't cool. But in Captain N, what little we're able to discern about Kevin Keane as a character shows him living well outside of the games are for nerds, shut-ins, etc. stereotype that still crops up even today, starting with the fact that he's not designed to look like a nerd. And back then, if a TV character was supposed to be a nerd, they let you know. Check out this inverted kickflip! In the Season 2 episode, Big Game, we briefly meet some of Kevin's friends from high school back on Earth, and it's confirmed that he's overall a pretty well-rounded guy. In addition to being known for his gaming prowess, he was smart enough to tutor his classmates. Hey! Aren't you that video game whiz who helped me study for my algebra test? Hi, Stacy. You remembered. It was just that one time, and when I asked you for a date, you were busy, but... Your name's Kerwin, right? And his iconic red N jacket? Turns out that wasn't just a random coincidence. That's a Letterman jacket, which he earned on his JV swim team. Yo, now I remember. You're on the junior varsity swim team, right? And you're Rick Walker, captain of the varsity football team. Hey, welcome to Video Land. And in case you didn't know, competitive swimming is a pretty involved, training-intensive sport. So this guy is sociable, athletic, generally well-rounded as you can reasonably expect to be as a high schooler, and he's a game master in an era when the only way to master any game was to practice and memorization. In many respects, Captain N was closer to the games are for all of us ideal of today than the limiting gamer stereotypes of his own time. Kevin, are cheerleaders chosen from the nobility where you come from? Uh, not exactly. Oh, you seem very impressed with this Stacy. Now, I don't know if all that makes Captain N the Game Master the best game cartoon or some kind of misunderstood classic, but it's definitely underrated, underappreciated, and it absolutely deserves another look from gamers now. One human alone could never beat me! <laughs> Maybe not alone, Mother Brain, but we can defeat you as a team! Oh! Especially since it's not like today is that much better. Have you tried to watch Sonic Boom? 